time to invite you into our daily briefing room where one of our leading tactical and strategic minds with years of experience as a as a commander at the highest level share their insight into the war in Ukraine. So let me welcome Major General Rupert Jones, former Standing Joint Forces Commander. Rupert, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, how are you? I'm well, so thank you for, for joining us. So Lugansk, the region of Lugansk has fallen to Russia, which maybe had something of the inevitable about it. But how significant is this, Rupert, to the wider war? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think it did have a sense of inevitability about it. Did it take longer than it might have done? Uh, one, one can discuss that. It certainly hasn't been easy for the Russians in in closing that 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 area you know they've they've played their strengths they've used very heavy artillery in doing so so is it significant i mean president putin will certainly uh, present it as being so but the ukrainians ultimately uh, fell back on their terms and it's a perfectly valid military decision to do to uh, trade in this case some territory to preserve the forces for another day and and they wait now for for more weapons, more munitions from their allies in Europe and, and around the world. Now, they are promised that extra extra support. As and when it arrives, Rupert, is it possible that a, a, a reinforced and, and to, a, to a degree, rearmed Ukrainian military can start some sort of a pushback that would be significant? Well, we've certainly seen previously, haven't we, that the Ukrainians are more than capable of pushing the Russians back uh, when they when they concert effort. So... I mean, it's interesting. It does feel as though time is more on the Ukrainian side than on the Russians. It has taken the Russians far longer than I suspect they thought it would to close out the territory they've gained uh, in the in the east through hard attritional uh, warfare. And they've paid a heavy price for that, both in terms of munitions, but also in forces expended. So I think it's entirely credible to think that the that the Ukrainians may well be able to, uh, with the with the new weapons as they come online, begin to regain some territory. There has been something of an expectation in, in recent weeks that once Russia had taken sufficient territory in the east of Ukraine, the, the Lugansk, they're still pursuing the the Dom, the, uh, the, uh, the Donetsk region, that you might see Putin, Vladimir Putin, push for some sort of peace. Now, a, a, a phony peace would be the assumption to buy time to rearm the Russian military, to, to regroup, maybe maybe get more, more troops into the front line. Is that expectation still there? Because we've since seen We've seen statements from across, certainly from Ukraine, but also from its allies, saying such a peace offer would not would not cut it. And you've heard Putin himself saying, look, the aim is still to take Ukraine. Are the expectations differing, changing now? Yeah, it's hard to tell, isn't it? I mean, President Zelensky has been really clear uh, the whole way through, hasn't he, that, that he wouldn't entertain any such uh, compromise, uh, if you like. Um, and were President Putin to seek a peace having taken uh, the Donbass, I mean, let's be really clear, that would be a huge compromise from where President Putin aspired to be at the, at the start of the conflict. So um, whether Pre- President Putin would put such a uh, proposal on the table, only, only time will tell. The person who's been really clear cut about it is President Zelensky, and that, that is that that would not be tolerable yeah. uh, to him and to, the, and to Ukraine. Right, the I mean the war's still raging. So so the so Europe and the West can't talk especially about what to do when it comes to reconstruct well, they can talk about it, they just can't do very much. There is plenty of talking going on, that's for sure, in Lugano, in Switzerland, a gathering of many leaders, many, many interests, a gathering to talk about a, a sort of new Marshall plan for Ukraine. And that's important, Rupert, isn't it? As a as a as a show of support for Ukraine, but also as a signal to Putin. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, the, the the reconstruction effort needed after a conflict like this is is mind boggling. Um, I mean, I think back to my own experience in in Iraq and Syria. The level of destruction to some of the cities uh, is it's it's hard at, at the time to even conceive how a city can ever come back to life. And yet, if you look at Mosul, for example liberated in in early 2017 you know and, and the old city was was very very significantly destroyed and yet slowly it comes back to back to life but it takes huge commitment from the local population and significant international effort so i think you're right it is it's very significant that people are having those conversations now because because it does it does point to the future yeah i mean i mean your scale of the task as you say 
really can't be overestimated. We're looking at a, a Ukrainian economy, which is set to shrink by half this year, by 50%. And you just look at the pictures that we see every day of the week with towns in, 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 in Ukraine, especially the east of the country, just flattened, reduced to piles of bricks. It's going to be the work of years, but also the, the work of many, many billions. Yes, I think, that, I think that's right. And yet countries, people have an extraordinary resilience in protecting their homeland, as the Ukrainians have demonstrated, and then when the time comes in rebuilding their, their homeland. Um, and so it, it'll be a gargantuan uh, undertaking. Um, but but it'll be fascinating to look back on this in, in, in 10 years' time. Yeah, one area where there seems to be no progress for all the talk, and that's the of the Black Sea blockade, the Russian blockade of those of those Ukrainian Black Sea ports, which are still blocking away, stopping the movement of vital Ukrainian grain, which is needed in all parts of the world, some of the poorest parts parts of the world, contributing to a crisis which some analysts say is, is all part of the Putin plan. He wants to create a food crisis in the poorest parts of the world. He wants to create a, a refugee crisis to put to put pressure on on Europe, for example, and yet we seem to be getting nowhere. Is there any sign of progress there? No, I mean, I'm still rather with you. It feels though that there's a bit of stalemate there. I mean, I'm quite certain that that is Putin's intention to use all means at his disposal to put pressure on the international community. Um, And as you say, some of the people suffering most from uh, that blockade are some of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, And yet, of course, some of those countries feel beholden to Russia uh, politically. And so so they're they're not they're not speaking out with the unanimity that that, uh, might bring greater pressure on Putin to change his policy. Major General Rupert Jones, good as always to talk to you.